Hi everyone, how are you? It's Casey. I am sorry for my long absence. I have been really sick with probably the flu, I don't know, but I literally am only starting to feel better today and it's been a full week of being very sick. My son has been very sick. It's just been horrible. So I wasn't able to do a video last week. The other thing is it's the weather's been really bad so yesterday I was thinking about doing a video but it was so dark again in the house there was just no way so I woke up today finally feeling better although I might end up clearing my throat a little and coughing um, I apologize for that I'm still a little bit congested um, but I feel better the Sun is shining so I'm hoping to get back to my life this week um, and making videos so Today's video is going to be a little unboxing, a little what I'm working on, and then a really cool um, sort of review, or I guess I'm not calling it review, um, showcase. So you'll remember that a couple of videos back, I was talking about how I would like to start showcasing um, Blythe Artist's work on my channel. Um, and this one is very special. It's not a doll and I will talk to you about it in just a minute. The first thing though, I did want to show you, I did <clears throat> get a doll done this week and I apologize for my voice. Ugh, it's bad. Um, this is the Sherlock doll and I'm really happy with how she came out. She kind of came out very scruffy looking. Um, and she is available in my shop. So the base doll for this doll is pretty expensive. So she's kind of a spendy one. If she doesn't sell, I'm hoping to take her to um, the first doll show of the year I'm doing, which is in April in Seattle. Um, so we'll see. I wasn't going to list her in my shop because I really need to start working on dolls for shows. Um, but I also don't really like work just sitting around for months, so I decided to just go ahead and list her and we'll see. She might still be around then, but anyway, this is her yesterday. Because she's Sherlock, um, I ordered her some special charms, a magnifying glass, um, some binoculars, but still kind of in the same theme of, of her outfit. So. I hope you like her. Check her out in my shop. There's more photos and I'll put some at the end of the video also. <coughs> the other thing is, I got another, I got a bunch of boxes in the mail yesterday. And this one I'm excited about because it's going to be one of my next dolls that I'm gonna work on. I did start working on <coughs> the tan doll. I'll give you a little preview. I'm doing a very open mouth um, I want to do kind of like buck teeth, so this one ugh, looks bad. That's the part of the process where I am scared that I'm messing the doll up. They always come out in the end, um, but there's kind of an ugly duckling stage where I'm just not so sure. So anyway, working on that one. And then this doll I got on a Blythe secondhand group on Facebook and I know I've mentioned before that's typically where I get authentic dolls so their second hand typically don't come with their box or their stock which is fine because I am planning on customizing them so it really doesn't matter to me <coughs> I'm really into fantasy colored hair so I'm usually looking for one of those and I saw one and I was super excited because I've been wanting to do this color hair in, on, in an authentic doll. And I apologize, I can't remember even now what the base doll is. I think it's a Prima doll, which means um, the Prima dolls had less stock and were less elaborate and were a little less expensive too. Um, so they're great dolls for customization if you're looking for an authentic doll. Um, but fantasy color hair in an affordable price is always kind of hard to come by. So even though I wasn't really ready for another doll, I cannot pass up a good price on a fantasy 
authentic. So she's going to go into the queue. Um, I have the tan doll that I want to get done. I worked more on the midi for um, the donation to Australia Blythe Fest. She's getting close to being done. I am working on a video for her customization process too. And then I do have a blonde girl back here in my queue also that I've had for a little while. So I do have a few that I need to get finished first, but I really like, as I said, the fantasy colors. So we'll see, she might jump, jump the line. So let's put those away. So that's kind of what I'm working on right now and excited about. <clears throat> but this box is really cool. And let me tell you a little more about it. So a while back, I saw um, a woman named Karen Stevenson post on a group about some dioramas that she was making. I think it might have been Blythe Diorama Group on Facebook. And if you'll remember back, um, I did a video about a diorama that I purchased. I was talking about in the video that I was hoping that the diorama was something that I could take to doll shows and doll conventions as part of my table display. And if you remember in that video when I got that diorama, it, it's very heavy. It's very well made. I love it, um, but it's very heavy and it does not come apart and there's no way to take it to shows in a suitcase. Maybe the shows that I do where I drive, which are very few, um, I would be able to take it, but definitely not on an airplane. So... Um, I was trying to think about, well, I wasn't thinking very hard about what I was going to do about that, but when I saw Karen's diorama, I was blown away on how cool they were and how accessible and lightweight they are. So basically, Karen's shop on Etsy is called Diverse Collect Design. Um, so I will put a link below if you want to check out wh what she has available. But basically, she's taking... Um, these large paper cardboard boxes from the craft store and turning them into dioramas. Um, so she included some info here. So let's look at it. I'm going to read it to you. Here's some info on the Blythe Essentials wardrobe. So this one is 13 inches tall, 8 inches wide, and 4.5 and inches deep. Um, it weighs two pounds and eight ounces. So that's that's kind of the, the cool thing that I was excited about is they're pretty lightweight. I mean, it's a little bit heavy, but nowhere near that diorama that I, I have. This is much more lightweight and much more compact and could easily go in, in a suitcase. Um, this one is made of wood, leather, faux leather, brass, chipboard, vinyl boards, and decorative paper in a travel theme. Um, it has a lighted area in the sleeping area, so we'll look at that in a minute. So she also installs lights in them, which are so cute. Um, there is a decorative drawer pull on each of the drawers. There are five shelves. Um, Garment rods, so she even makes it so that you can hang their clothes in there, which is so cool. Um, let's see, what else? Brass latches, metal corner reinforcements, and this one, the price is 150 um, which really is an, a great price because if you go and you check out these boxes, and I'm going to show you what I did after I saw her make these. Um, I did go purchase a couple boxes and they're really expensive to start out with. The boxes alone are around $30 just to start. So after I saw these and I went and bought the boxes, Karen reached out to me about reviewing or showcasing her on my channel and I thought, awesome, I want to see what she does and I also might just get one from her because then the work is all done because I imagine it takes a long time 
Oh my gosh, look how cute. <sighs> Ugh, I love this one. I think Karen probably knows how much I am gonna love this and how hard it's gonna be for me to send it back that I might just not. <laughs> look at how cute that is. Oh my gosh, it looks like an old suitcase. I love it. So there's some bubble wrap on the inside. I wanna be very careful. Oh, cute. So the light's on, actually. <clears throat> I'm gonna see how best I can show this to you. So you can see the light is on up there. Let's turn it on and off. Um, let's look at the back really quick. So it, it's a very cute little suitcase. You can see that it closes just like that. Oh man, this is so cute. And let's look more on the inside. So let's look at this side first. So she has created these little drawers that come out so you can hide. This would be a great drawer for shoes, I would think, or toys for the doll. This is Velcro. Oh, how cool. So what's nice about this Velcro um, is that if you put stuff in there, it's not gonna fall out. It's gonna hold everything in there while you travel, which is great. And then you can see up here You've got the rod for hanging closed there. So that's sort of that side. And then what's so cool is this is the side that the doll travels in. So the point of these is to have a space for the doll and look how good she looks in there. Oh my gosh. Um, and then you have another place down here for hanging more and then some more drawers. And these are made of, looks like paper, and these are little beads. Lots of storage space, really. And so the other thing I was thinking about with these, and as far as traveling to a show, they would be, you know, a lot of times at, at like BlytheCon, um, people come with their doll. You can see the light on. They come with their doll in a carry case or a purse type case, but something like this would be cool because you would be able to carry all her accessories um, as well as stand her up. So my idea was to um, have it standing on my table and have the doll inside kind of like this and everything themed and then the case would be available for additional purchase or whatever. <clears throat> but as usual, I get the idea to try to do something like this myself. And I haven't started yet, but I'll show you. Um, actually, Karen has in her shop right now one of the boxes that I bought. Let me just show it to you really quickly. So this one is much, much bigger than the one she sent me to show you guys. It's a lot bigger on the inside. Um, and when I went over, I got this at Michael's. When I went over there, they didn't have very many of these larger boxes left. And so I got this one because it was an adventure one and I wanted to make this doll into kind of um, a nerdy adventure kind of theme. So I was thinking about turning this box into kind of a, again, a travel diorama. But the more I've looked at what it will take to do that, <laughs> as far as papers and time, um, I think it's going to be a lot of work. So I'm absolutely in love with this one. It's so cute, oh my gosh. So I don't know yet if I'm going to follow through with um, 
making it myself. I ended up getting two boxes actually. I got the travel one and then I got this um, garden theme kind of peacock one. And I've been obsessed with this show on Netflix right now. It's a British reality TV show about interior design. Um, and so I kind of want to do those boxes. I'm just concerned about having the time to do it. So anyway, I hope you found this interesting. I hope you go over to Karen's shop and look at um, what she has to offer. I imagine she takes custom orders. I'm not really sure. I didn't ask her about that, but I imagine she would um, take a custom order. So head over to her shop and see if you're interested. I think they're really cool. I'm gonna have a really hard time sending this back that I might not. Um, so anyway, if you're interested in having me review or I keep saying review and I don't want to make it sound like a review because I don't want to judge anyone. Um, I just want to showcase your work. If you're interested in having me showcase your work on my channel, please just get in touch with me. It does not have to be a doll. It could be an accessory like this. Um, then just get in touch with me through YouTube or Etsy or on Facebook um, and I would love to see your work in person and, and share it with everyone else. So thanks as always so much for watching and I will see you all again soon. Bye.